Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. So, brand new week. Before you know it, it's the next week, right? So, we are back again uh, in our classes, and I really hope that um, this subject of praying in the spirit will be a blessing to each of us. So, let's pray, and uh, we will start our discussion. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer. Uh, Father, we ask that each one of us will be strengthened in this area of our spiritual walk with you. Uh, Father, as we study about praying in the Spirit, Lord, we pray that uh, you will give us a clear understanding and a strong foundation that our hearts may be open to receiving all that you want to do, all that you want to pour out into our lives. We bless you. We honor you, God. We submit uh, these sessions into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we've been talking about prayer in the spirit. And in the last class, we explained that prayer in the spirit does not mean praying um, intensely. Because sometimes that's how they interpret it. Just praying intensely as praying with the spirit. Because I'm praying with my spirit. But we saw how Paul says that I pray with the Spirit and I also pray with my understanding. I sing in the Spirit and I also sing with my understanding. So he himself is giving us two, if you want to call it, two types of prayers. One is praying in the Spirit. The second type is praying with understanding. And we clarified that when we pray in our own language, our understanding is at work or our mind is at work. And so, praying with understanding means praying with human languages or a language that we know, a language that we can discern. Praying in tongues is what is called as praying in the spirit because that's the second type. You can't understand. Praying with understanding, we can understand. But the other type of prayer we cannot understand. And that is tongues. So there are two types of prayers. And we clarified that praying in tongues is what is equal to praying in the spirit. So whenever we say prayer in the spirit, it simply means praying in tongues. Okay. And we were looking at what are the benefits of praying in tongues. We saw Paul's instruction in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, where he says, you pray all kinds of prayers for the saints in the spirit. So he's saying that uh, we must be praying all kinds, types of prayers, including praying in the spirit for God's people. And what are the benefits? The first benefit, uh, anyone, can you recall? We discussed only two benefits last time. So, what was the first one? Praying without boundaries, where we said our mind knows limited things compared to what God knows. And so, when we are praying in the Spirit, we are led by the Holy Spirit and we can pray beyond our limited understanding. So, uh, we could be praying in tongues right now. And I gave us examples about how we end up praying for the future. We end up praying for somebody else. We end up praying for, uh, you know, something regarding the ministry or the family. Things that our brain cannot know right now. That is beyond the boundaries. So, that is an advantage. Even when, you know, we don't know what to pray, uh, sometimes it's just good to pray in tongues. If you set aside one hour and you've told yourself, I will only pray in tongues. I don't, I can't think of any prayer points. I'll pray only in tongues. It's still fine because the Holy Spirit is helping us pray. Right? And we are touching on points from the mind of God because the Holy Spirit guides us according to uh, God's will. All right. So praying without boundaries. What was the second advantage? importance praying according to the will of god so the holy spirit leads us to pray in the will of god sometimes we don't know what is god's will uh, when it comes to our studies when it comes to um, you know our um, 
future decisions, business, marriage. It's pretty hard. We wonder, God, is it my will? Is it your will? Now, if we, uh, we want to pray in God's will, one blessing that God has given us is pray in tongues. Whenever we pray in tongues, I shared with us, we are 100% praying in the will of God. We don't have to be afraid. Because where did that prayer originate? Where is it coming from? Where is the source of the prayer? Holy Spirit. Yeah. So why will Holy Spirit pray something which is not God's will? Never. Because Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they're all in agreement. They're all in harmony. So if there is an issue or a matter, I don't know God's will. Simple. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Because we are sure that it is in the will of God. Romans 8 verses 26 and 27. So let's quickly read verse 27 once again. Verse 27. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Yes. Because he speaks inter intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Ha, so exactly what we are saying. Because he makes intercession, meaning the prayer is coming from the Holy Spirit. Voices us, the faculty of speech, right? That is ours. But where is the prayer coming from? It's coming from the Holy Spirit. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So Holy Spirit will always pray according to the will of the Father. Okay. So this is a this is an advantage. When I don't know, God, what is your will? Just pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. Because Holy Spirit will make intercession according to the will of God. So we don't have to be afraid. We can be confident that, okay, whatever I prayed, it is in the will of God. God will do His will, His purpose for me. I'm not asking for my purpose. He will do it according to His purpose. And I am confident that I'm walking in what God wants me to walk in. So that is the advantage. Okay, now let's look at all the other things about praying in the Spirit. Next. When we pray in the Spirit, it will help us overcome the weaknesses of the flesh. Now, if we recall, we said that we are spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. When we are born again, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. So which part of us is completely transformed? The spirit is completely transformed. But we may still have matters in our soul and our body which we need to continue to trust God for. Right? So, once we are born again, we may still encounter what is known as certain weaknesses of the flesh. Weaknesses of the flesh. For Timothy, Paul wrote to Timothy, we saw that. He said, for you have not received the spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind. Why did he tell Timothy that? As we study Paul's letter to Timothy, it seems like Timothy was afraid. Timothy was scared because he has seen a senior minister of God, Paul, and now he has to do the work of the ministry. He's getting a little scared. Oh, Paul, I can't do it like you. Now, what will I answer? If people ask questions and also when we study about the nature of the church that Timothy was going to handle, uh, there were many things that he needed to be ready to answer. So maybe he was fearful for that or maybe he had a timid personality in general. Right? What is this? It's a weakness. Weakness. Right? We can have many different kinds of weaknesses. Anxiety. Uh, a temper. What are the other weaknesses that we experience commonly? Anger, of course, temper, laziness, procrastination. 
last wandering mind okay somebody was listening to the sermon okay jealousy pride greed okay envy jealousy over smart okay being over smart okay fine that's also yeah probably one of the weaknesses of the flesh unforgiveness bitterness okay negative thinking so many weaknesses are there so many are there okay so now how to deal with these weaknesses of course we are spending time in god's word because god's word will transform us god's word will build us up but we can also open up to the work of the holy spirit when we open up to the work of the holy spirit the weaknesses can be transformed into strength the holy spirit will help us in all our weaknesses that's what the bible says can someone read romans 8 verse 26 likewise the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses or we do not know how we do not oh, yeah. know what we should pray or as yes. we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered okay thank you um juliana so <laughs> when we do not know how to pray the spirit helps in our weakness so what is this weakness in this context that weakness is we not a, we don't know what to pray for but spirit is helping in this weakness right now consider this consider this when john the baptist spoke about jesus in matthew chapter 3 and verse 11 he sees jesus and he says i baptize you with water but he who is coming after me he will baptize you with holy spirit and fire holy spirit and fire so jesus baptizes us with holy spirit and fire with baptism in the holy spirit comes the release of the gifts of the spirit but it is also called baptism of fire what is the meaning what is baptism of fire why is it called baptism of fire yes because when we see a fire when we see a bonfire what happens whenever you throw anything light in it for example maybe a paper or a straw it just burns burns the chaff quickly burns okay so baptism of fire means that whenever we are allowing the work of the spirit in this case praying in the spirit you can imagine a blazing fire we have we have in flames of the holy spirit and where there is fire weaknesses cannot stay it will start getting burnt up all right so this is one of the ways one of the ways in which you and i can strengthen ourselves how to become strong in god how to become uh, how to overcome our weaknesses all of us have challenges weaknesses our own set of weaknesses pray in the spirit that's why we keep saying pray in the spirit pray in the spirit spend time set aside time by yourself pray in the spirit because we are going to become stronger even the works of the flesh in us will be destroyed by that fire the fire of the spirit so this is the advantage you and i can experience the overcoming of the weaknesses of the flesh think about peter think about those 120 people on the upper room just some days back uh, or you know some time back jesus was crucified at that time peter disappeared you are peter no sorry sorry i don't know what you're talking about he escaped he denied christ he ran away but once he was filled with the holy spirit acts chapter 2 he stands up he makes his first sermon 3000 people get saved same peter who ran away what happened baptism in the holy spirit amen the fire of the holy spirit so when we pray in tongues what are we doing we are stirring up that fire 
stirring up that fire god burn in me everything that is not of you the wrong heart attitudes the stubbornness the hardness the sinfulness the wickedness the holy spirit will burn it up and you look at the same person hey you're the same person no who was weak in this area how come you're strong now the word of god strengthens us the work of the holy spirit strengthens us that's the way to receive from praying in the spirit so it will help us overcome our weaknesses let's move on next is it builds us up spiritually spiritually we are strengthened now when we look at uh, every part of our being the common and the easy one to understand is our physical being if somebody is weak uh, they've just come out of sickness maybe they've lost a lot of weight they don't feel strong right now uh, but what if they take good care of their health you know they eat well rest well uh, they'll gain they'll gain weight they'll become stronger they'll have better immunity because their health was built up their natural health was built up and they did certain things to build up their natural health when it comes to spiritual health how is our spiritual health what does the medical report say about our spiritual health you know are we fit or we still need to gain some weight we still need to gain some immunity what does our spiritual health look like in order for me to build my spirit man my inner man make him stronger god has given us of course the word is there but there's also the the speaking in tongues when we speak in tongues though we don't realize what's happening spirit man is becoming stronger 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 okay so it's actually happening you can imagine you can imagine yourself your spirit man it's gaining some strength gaining some power okay gaining some stability so we can build our spiritual man through praying in tongues so where do we see these scriptures it is in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 4 where it says he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself so when we pray in unknown tongue from outside it sounds very simple or uh, like what are they doing why are they praying in tongues but what does the bible say the person who is speaking in tongues is edifying himself which means that that word edify is build up build up so that person is building himself up do you want to become strong in your spirit do i want to become strong in my spirit pray in tongues pray in tongues that's why god has uh, you know sort of designed it it will build up my spirit man more faith uh, more sensitivity to hear the voice of god you know sometimes we say if you want to hear what god is saying pray in tongues during supernatural love we say that right pray in tongues everyone let's pray in tongues for some time why this is the reason you're building up your spirit man there is strength there is greater sensitivity there is greater ability to receive from god all that is possible when we are praying in tongues so we will build ourselves up in the inner man there's another verse that says that uh, praying in tongues will build us that is jude 120 where it says building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the spirit building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the spirit so we can build ourselves up by praying in the spirit now beyond this there are many other benefits i'm just going to keep going on if you have questions please stop me but i'll continue as it is the next is to keep ourselves in the love of god if we want to walk in love that is also something where we need god's help it's not easy sometimes to walk in god's god kind of love with people but when we pray in the holy spirit the bible promises us that we will keep ourselves in the love of god same scripture jude 120 and then verse 21 it says praying in the holy spirit keeping yourselves in the love of god 
And so we can walk in love if we pray in the Holy Spirit. The next advantage is it brings rest and refreshing. Have you ever wondered uh, when we physically do a lot of activities, okay, if you have a tiring week, uh, we sleep, right? We sleep, we rest, we slow down a little bit so that we can rest and refresh ourselves and come back for the remainder of the month, the next week. What to do spiritually? If we are, you could say, uh, pouring out of our spirit man, we are serving, we are ministering, how to refill your spirit man, get that refreshing back so that you can come back on the task and continue to pour out. How is it possible? Yeah, so the Bible says when we pray in tongues, Isaiah 28 verse 11, verse, verse 11 and 12, for with the stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people to whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So God has built in, if you want to put it this way, a method or a mechanism to refresh our spirit. See, we are, we are doing so much for the Lord. Sometimes we may wonder, won't, won't I become tired spiritually? Like you're the minister, you're the minister, you're the minister. How can you keep ministering? We need some refreshing. We need some rest. But you know what is the rest for the spirit man? Tongues. When we pray in tongues... It rejuvenates the spirit man. It's like how for the body we slept, we, we slowed down, we ate some good food, we came back. For the spirit, when we pray in tongues and we come back, full recharge, we're back again. Okay? That's how God has designed it. Do we want to be fresh in the spirit? Do we want to have the capacity to keep receiving from the Lord, keep pouring out to the work of his ministry. Where are we going to get that strength? Where are we going to get that, um, you know, refreshing rest? Pray in tongues. I heard once one very famous man of God, uh, he was ministering up until the age of uh, 80 plus. He used to uh, speak in conventions, huge conventions and uh, minister to people. And his body became old, right? Like 80 plus. But he still serving in the ministry. So people would ask him, like, sir, how are you managing? Every day you are preaching, you're preaching three, three uh, services, five services. You're still doing it. How do you do this? So he told them that I spend a lot of time praying in the spirit. Sometimes my body is tired. So when I'm not able to sit and pray, or I'm not able to kneel and pray by that age, what he used to do is he simply lie down. His body is getting the rest, but he's praying in the spirit. He's praying in tongues, constantly praying in tongues. And as he's praying in the spirit, he can experience the refreshing of his spirit man. Next day, the man is ready, physically rested, spiritually recharged, back on duty, preaching the word. God has given us a method to refresh our spirit man. And that is to pray in tongues. So as we are hearing all this, don't you all feel like, hey, this is so important, right? This is super important. So we have to make time in our daily lives to pray in the spirit. Schedule times, we'll come to it later. Schedule times plus extra time, whenever you can. It's so helpful. Why not pray in the spirit? Pray, pray, pray all the time. Pray in the spirit. Okay. So that will really be something amazing which will transform each one of our lives. Giving time, committing time to praying in the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's move on. So rest, refreshing of the spirit man will come by praying in tongues. Now the next advantage is that it helps us praise and magnify God. So there are certain passages here which are given even on the day when the Holy Spirit was poured out. 
Acts chapter 2. People heard those believers praying in tongues and glorifying God. So when they were praying in tongues, what were they actually doing? Glorifying God. So there are times when we want to worship God. And you know, when we are worshipping God, we may not have all the words that uh, describe or express how we feel. So initially, we may start off with um, praying in English or, or worshipping in English or worshipping in Hindi or our own languages. But as we are worshipping, we feel like, God, you're so great. I don't even have words in my language to praise you. So how to praise God now? How to magnify him? Just sing in tongues. Sing in tongues. Pray in tongues. Because tongues is also magnifying and glorifying God. That's also worship. We can do that. And in fact, we will be giving God the best worship. Because it's led by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And uh, while we pray, while we sing in the Spirit, just be mindful. Um, you know, Paul, he instructed the Corinthian church on the use of tongues. And he said that the normal tongues is for personal edification. That means you and I, personally, we can pray in tongues at all times. We can sing in tongues at all times. What to do when we are in a group setting like this? You know, can I just only talk in tongues and sing in tongues? No, because the people will not understand. So for a public setting, unless there is an interpreter, we must not deliver messages in tongues. Okay? So when it comes to worship, a little bit of you know worshipping in, in the spirit and all is fine. It's totally fine. And uh, particularly in a gathering like this where we all know what we are doing, there is no unbeliever here who will get confused. So it's okay. We can still sing in tongues. We can still worship in tongues. But if you are in a church setting, then, uh, and we have a lot of unbelievers coming in, those are the times when we have to be a little bit sensitive to the fact that there are unbelievers also in the gathering. Okay. Yes. Ma'am, uh, yes. when we are praying in <laughs> tongues in public, so when we are, if we interpret it, so interpretation is also by faith, right? Yes. Yeah. So if I'm praying in tongues over Raju, mm. suppose, mm. and uh, I receive something, okay, I'm, I, I'm thinking like this, yeah. that it, this is what God is saying. So I can interpret it, that thing by faith. Yeah, you can. You can, you can, you can trust God for the operation of the gift of the spirit, which is interpretation of tongues. The way tongues is operating, say, God, I want another gift, interpretation of tongues. Mm. So with the help of that, you can interpret and tell Raja. And uh, one, like if, when we are praying in tongues, when I'm praying in tongues, mm -hmm. when I started praying, so I used to think that it, is it me or is it? the spirit. Yeah. So same thing happens with interpretation? Um, I, it could happen. See, initially we all may have our logical mind kick in and uh, sort of interfere with what God is doing. But eventually, like as we are making our spirit man strong, right, we will know that what we are saying is from the Lord. Uh, I gave us another scripture, Romans 8 verse 16. If you recall, it says, the spirit bears witness with our spirit. That means, Holy Spirit gives us a confirmation in our spirit man that what you're talking is tongues, what you're interpreting is correct. So we go by what Holy Spirit is telling us. Got it? Logic will tell us something is wrong, you're making it up. Got it. So that way. Is there, but uh, when we are interpreting, do we get something like, like surety or a word, like word from Bible that, okay, God is speaking this, like that? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, how do we put it? It's like how we hear from God, either you picture, or words, anything. So it is like when we do prophecy. Yeah, somewhat like that. It somewhat could like follow that. the same process. Okay. And uh, 
in some situations it could be without a visual process like um you know when we study the prophetic we'll say we'll teach this there are two ways one is a visual process where you are seeing things the second process is inspiration inspiration means you know there are times where we open our mouth we are not seeing anything there are no images it's just flowing you don't even know what you're saying but you're saying it it's already gone out of your mouth it's flowing that is through inspiration so that can also happen through inspiration yeah okay sure um there is a question in the chat okay akili says is praying in tongues the only way to pray in the spirit if so how do you know it's the spirit and not an imitation of someone you heard praying in tongues did jesus pray in tongues or command us to pray in tongues okay um so akili for the initial part of your question is praying in tongues the only way to pray in the spirit answer is yes we've already established that from 1 corinthians 14 verses 14 and 15 that is what it means praying in the spirit means praying in tongues secondly if so how do we how do you know it's the spirit and not imitation i just answered that question romans 8 16 if you and i are a child of god we know when the spirit is saying something to us it's also like saying john um, uh, you know uh, in john chapter 3 jesus said the sheep hear my voice so we know the father is talking god is talking so we are sure so we have to go by the impression that the spirit puts in our spirit so we will know that it is what uh, we are doing by the spirit now did jesus pray in tongues or command us to pray in tongues well um i would say did jesus pray in tongues there's no scripture or verse that shows us that he prayed in tongues now does does that mean he didn't i don't know but it doesn't you know uh, uh, say in any of the verses that jesus prayed in tongues so i, I don't want to interpret that uh, further secondly your question was did he command us to pray in tongues i would say yes though not directly you remember acts 18 he said go to jerusalem wait and you shall receive the holy spirit right the spirit will pour out on you and you shall be my witnesses he knew that the people are going to speak in tongues and jesus also knew the prophecies made earlier joel chapter 2 that was a prophecy of the spirit being poured out sons and daughters prophesying and you know doing all these supernatural things so he knew that the people are going to flow in tongues so in an indirect way you could say yeah of course he did command us to pray in tongues i hope that addresses your question akili if there's any issues with that please let me know uh okay uh, abhi demi says ma'am Uh, sorry just to know at the end of this lecture do we have assignments okay i cannot see it on the portal yes so this month uh, the assignments had to have been posted last week which i haven't so hopefully i'll do it this week but yes you will have assignment from my course okay so those of you who are listening online and uh, on campus your assignment will be on google classroom the e learners your assignment will be on e learn is that fine yeah please let me know okay so any other queries about tongues or we'll cover the ad advantages some more are there okay so there are two more for us to cover we said that okay uh there is a comment by elkana but he's sharing his view all right um let's come back to the topic here it says enables our spirits to receive the mysteries of god for our lives 
do you remember in the last class we said when one speaks to god in tongues he speaks mysteries mysteries why why are we saying it that they are mysteries because we cannot understand what we are saying yeah so we cannot understand what we are saying so that is mysteries but should the mystery always remain a mystery can also and cannot also because there are certain things that god may not want to reveal that's fine okay god may not reveal everything if it is not required but there are things that god also wants to reveal so thing most of what we are praying for need not be a mystery so how to receive the answer you know i prayed for many things let's imagine i prayed for one hour what did i pray for how to get that knowledge is it even possible to get that knowledge yes yes so we'll just go back to one passage in first corinthians chapter 2 verses 7 through 16 that whole passage says like you know i has not uh, seen ear has not heard mind has not conceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him which means it's a mystery the beautiful things that god has for us is a mystery but in verse 10 of that passage it says but he has revealed by the holy spirit so even if there are mysteries god can reveal those mysteries by his holy spirit so is it wrong to pray lord uh, reveal to me what i just prayed in tongues no it's not wrong we can pray like that we can ask like that then what will happen holy spirit can reveal he may say okay you know what you just prayed for something you just prayed for your business you just prayed for this or you were just praising god that's all but he reveals to us he can reveal to us and there's a really wonderful scripture that you and i can even claim for ourselves first corinthians 2 verse 16 it says we have the mind of christ we have the mind of christ meaning what god thinks i can think like that but how because holy spirit knows what god is thinking and he reveals it to me so no wonder the thoughts which are in god's mind are now in my mind and so i have the mind of christ how to go about life how to go about making decisions how to go about you know doing things with god's wisdom do i have god's wisdom yes the bible says first corinthians 2:16 i have the mind of christ we have the mind of christ because we have the holy spirit who knows the mind of god and he reveals it to us so yes we pray mysteries unto god but those mysteries need not remain mysteries you and i can come to know what god wants us to do way into the future even right now god can reveal it to us and tell us so that why does god tell us beforehand why does he tell us beforehand what is going to happen later preparation okay that's one of the main things if god is revealing something which is into our future it's because he's telling us you have the time now to get ready get ready prepare yourself equip yourself be ready so that is the reason god reveals beforehand his purposes for us which are yet to come and finally the last advantage here this is to stir the gifts of the spirit you know there are nine gifts of the spirit which are listed in first uh, corinthians chapter 12 all the gifts of the spirit are from the holy spirit the same holy spirit manifests all the nine gifts of the spirit now 
Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 6, and he said, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So there was a, a deposit of the gifts of the Spirit in Timothy's life. How to make it active? Okay, now many of us know, those of us who use some gadgets, um, that maybe the gadgets need a little bit of warm up. Okay, there are some motors and generators, they do something initially uh, and you know they turn it for a little bit of time. There's a little warm up, right? So once the warm up happens, the generator starts full, full swing, it starts to work. So in the same way, what Paul is telling Timothy is, you know what? God has deposited gifts. He has deposited, I'm adding to this, to uh, Timothy, he was told only gifts. But God puts grace on our lives. He, he puts a lot of things in us. Sometimes we need a warm-up for those gifts to flow. Otherwise, even if the gifts are there, they will not be visible. Like for example, you know, many of us, we drink tea and coffee and uh, we prefer some sugar in the tea. Imagine somebody gives a cup of tea, there is sugar, but you never stirred it. You'll be complaining. Oh, why didn't they put sugar? They should have put sugar. But sugar is there. What is the problem? Stirring. Nobody stirred it. In the same way, gifts of the Spirit, when we pray for the gifts of the Spirit, God deposits it in us, but those gifts are not coming out. They're not expressing themselves. They're not being released. What is the problem? Gifts are not there? No, no, no. Gifts are there, but they are not stirred up. How to stir it up? There is no scripture for this, but in common practice, this is what we observe. When we pray in tongues, it's as if, all the gifts flow very nicely. Suddenly, prophecy comes easy, right? Discerning of spirits comes easier. So, word of knowledge comes easier. There is something about this primary gift or initial gift of praying in tongues. So, when we pray in tongues, it's like we are doing that stirring process. Do, are we going to go and minister to someone? Just take five minutes, ten minutes, pray in the spirit. Are you going to lead worship? Pray in the spirit. Are you going to preach the word? Pray in the spirit. Okay? Are you going to counsel somebody? Pray in the spirit. Why? We're asking God, God, you have given us the wisdom, the understanding, everything. I am stirring it up. Let it flow. Let it flow through me. As I open my mouth, let it flow, oh God. So, praying in tongues is also like stirring up the gifts for a better flow. So, these are all the key advantages there are many more advantages of praying in the spirit uh, but based on all of this you and i must make sure that we set aside time to pray in tongues so are there any questions okay uh, akili has a question he says uh, one last question it is said that on the day of Pentecost, the people gathering were able to hear disciples speak in their different languages. Can tongues be a human language? Answer is yes. Tongues can be a human language. Tongues is when we pray in the languages of angels and of humans. Yeah, it can't be our language because if we are speaking our language, we understand it. It has to be somebody else's language. See, because it will not be tongues only. If we are speaking our language, there is understanding involved. Then how can it be tongues? It's praying with understanding. So it has to be some other language which we don't understand. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Akili, I hope that addresses your question. Any question? Let's see. Okay. No more questions? Yes, Prem. Ma'am, can you please explain the Acts chapter 10, uh -huh. 
was uh, 45 to 48 ma'am Okay, so this is the passage where we have something um, remarkable happening in the history of uh, the Christian faith. So what is it? Till Acts 10, they were preaching the gospel only to the Jews. But in Acts 10, for the first time, Peter goes to the house of uh, an, you know, a, a centurion of the Italian regiment, Cornelius. And Cornelius' family is gathered and Peter preaches to them first time in the history to the Gentiles. But when he is preaching, what happens is even before he can give an altar call, the Holy Spirit is poured out on them. So what does it mean? It simply means that when they heard the message of Peter, they believed in Jesus. They believed in Jesus and immediately God poured out his Holy Spirit on the Gentiles. Okay, so once the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles, it was very clear that they are believers because only believers can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes or no? Yeah, so when Peter saw that the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles, he says, how can we stop them from taking water baptism? Okay, next thing they do is give them water baptism. So that's what happens in this passage. Is that okay, Prem? Sure. Any other questions? Pastor, I can say something. Yes. Yeah, Pooja. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor. When now, when you are talking now, right now, the five minute wait, uh, before now the brother talking, then when he's speaking the word, uh, when he speak in tongue, then Holy Spirit will uh means operate the gift and all prophecy. We're talking to uh, uh you're talking uh about the prophecy and uh, and gift of tongue. Yes. So right now, when he's speaking right now, that time I feel with Holy Spirit, Pastor. Please. Is that the word touching my heart? I feel with spirit. Thank you so much, Pastor. And then same, when you're talking in same time, same uh, same things, Holy Spirit doing. When I'm uh, when I'm speaking in tongue, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit uh, reveal the word and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I'm uh, when I open my mouth and speaking tongue, the Holy Spirit showed me so many things and I propose for people. So thank mm. you so much for encouraging <laughs> me and helping me. Thank you so mm. much. Yeah, I receive it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pooja, for sharing. We praise God. We, um, you know, magnify God for that. Um, okay, so we have uh, one question. I'm hoping last question here from... Uh, Anthony, Anthony says, can you explain 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 and 2? Um, so Anthony, it's the same that we mentioned earlier, that when we speak in tongues, it can be a language of uh, humans or angels. But this passage is in between 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. Let me read it for all of us. Uh, so 1 Corinthians 13, 1 and 2 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so, so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So very simple. What it says is, even if there are the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, okay, 1 Corinthians 12 has a list of gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 has instructions on how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. In between is 1 Corinthians 13. So what is Paul saying? Paul is saying gifts are important. Gifts are good. We must use the gifts. But love should be the basis of the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. So if there is no love, what happens? We use the gifts for popularity, pride, other things, but that should not be the case. Love is the basis for the use of gifts. Okay, so I hope that uh, addresses your question, Anthony.
All right. So with that, we will take a break. You can go for 10 minutes and we'll be back soon. Thank you.